What's good, y'all? Welcome back. Let's get let's get back into this. This is part uh, four, I believe. Let's go. On your neck, and the only time you recognize it being on your neck is when you want to get away with doing something that you think white men are getting away with doing. Because let's just be real. Whenever we hear about this war against black men, it's usually being brought up when there's a black man like R. Kelly, Bill Cosby. We see Trey Songs going through it, Ari Spears. When they engage in some degeneracy and then they're getting a consequence for it. And black men think that because they perceive white men to be getting away with crimes, they want to be able to get away with crimes as well. The reality is Dr. Umar can sit up here and list all the different ways that the system is disenfranchising black men and lump black men in a victim boat. But the reality is he can, what he cannot tell you is what black men did in response to it. Because it See, and that, and, that's, and that is how you know this chick is toxic because she was just hitting on something. Yes, Umar, and I say this about Umar too, he sets up this narrative and sets up this uh, like uh, system where quote unquote blacks could just fall back into like, oh yeah, this is why, you know, the white man and all this stuff, that's why I can't do this and that's why we can't do that, yada yada. So when she's saying all that about, you know, the, the systems and victimization, yes, agree. But then she follows it up by saying, oh, and then, you know, the quote unquote black man has done, done, done nothing. Like, what? Come on. That's why, look, never take anybody more serious than they take themselves. And Cynthia G right here is showing you that you're not supposed to take her serious. That's Again, that's why I stopped doing videos on her, because she is not to be taken serious. Because the stuff that she's, that comes out of her mouth is just not correct. It's not correct. She is so broken and battered that she'll say anything as long as it makes her feel good and puts quote unquote black men down. Whether it's true or false. They did nothing. They laid down and they nested under the skirt of their non-black preferences and only to complain that whenever they commit a crime, they're not getting off like they So let's did. find out. Dr. Umar, what have black men done? Well, number one, again, I think that it is such a shame coming from a psychological perspective that we seek to heal our wounds as a people by relying on unprofessional testimony by individuals who have a vendetta against the opposite gender in their community. When you hear Sister Cynthia speak, you can hear a hurt and a pain and a hatred towards black men. We cannot find an effective solution to black male female relationship issues or the oppression of black men or black women when the people at the table having the conversation have uh, emotional, negative, emotional, and pathological interest in the conversation that are not. Umar, the question wasn't about my emotional state. The question was, what did black men. Yeah, the question wasn't about your emotional state, but it's clear not only to Umar, but to everybody else on the panel, I'm sure, and everyone that's watching that watched this video and that's watching my video, that clearly you are biased in what you're saying because what you're saying is so inflammatory and so flagrant. Whereas uh, a quote unquote black woman who's as such as yourself, Cynthia G, who, who speaks in such a way that it's like, hey, you know, I'm educated. You're trying to give that off and I know what I'm talking about then you cannot follow it up by saying, oh, black men just rolled over and did nothing. Now, again, there's one thing if you agree or disagree with what was going on back then and, and their methods, but you can't sit there and say they weren't doing nothing. Like, that's just... Like, like come on. And do it response to their disenfranchisement. Yeah, because because you're trying to pathologize my emotional. Again, she's cutting him off because he 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 struck a nerve with that. He struck a nerve, and you see how he's responding to her. He he, and I give Umar credit on this because he he already knows he's not gonna keep like going in. He gets it, and I'm sure he's very familiar with Cynthia G. They're both YouTubers. I'm sure he's very familiar. I'm sure he's seen her videos. I'm sure he he has a. a, a uh, at least a base level understanding prior to uh, getting into this uh, panel discussion with her. Uh, so, 
you know, you see how he's, how he's responding to her, though. Okay, I'm, and I'm a psychologist, too. But what May you're I not finish? doing is telling us what black men May is. I, I believe he'll get there, Dr. Omar. Dr. Omar? And I'll end it quickly, Sister Tammy. According to Mrs. Cynthia G., Dr. King was assassinated because he was doing nothing. Malcolm X was assassinated because he was doing nothing. Mega Evers was assassinated because he was doing nothing. Fred Hampton was assassinated because he was doing nothing. That narrative that black men have done nothing to fight back against systemic oppression, not only against ourselves, but against our women, our children, our elders, and our community is absolutely ridiculous. The cemetery is filled with black men, names we know and names we don't know, who gave their life for the freedom, liberation, and emancipation of African people. How can you disrespect the history of so many black men, past and present, who continue to... He going in. <laughs> he going in. And again, for all the, the, the brothers out there that be like, oh, you always hate on Omar. And stuff like that. I don't hate on Omar. It's not hate. I, I'm just objective. I'm an objective observer. That's it. I, I point out the good when I see it. And I point out the bad when I see it. That's it. And right now... He's on a roll. He's correct. Now, again, it, that it doesn't matter whether you agree with the ta the tactics used by Dr. Uh, quote unquote Martin Luther King or um, Fred Hampton or Malcolm X or I believe he said Megger Evers or whatever. That's beyond the point. Ultimately, these people thought when they were doing what they were doing that it was for the greater good of their people. Now, I, I could go down a list of all of them and, and, and point out how it was wrong. Because when you really think about it, the quote unquote Black Panther, the Black Panther Party, that was a good movie, actually. Uh, I forget the name of it, but that was a good movie. Uh, but uh, the Fred Hampton movie, it's not called the Fred Hampton movie, but y'all you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's, it's a good movie. I think uh, Daniel Kaluuya did a good job um, in that, you know, but uh, I, I digress. The quote unquote Black Panther Party was a socialist party, all right? That's why they had the fist. The, the, the quote unquote Black Power Fist, that's not the Black Power Fist. That's socialism that came over from Russia. And also, that, look, for y'all wannabe historians out there, look, the Black Panther Party was socialist. Dr. Martin Luther King was a pawn of socialists. And communists. So was W.E.B. Du Bois. So socialism, communism, search out quote unquote blacks to use as oftentimes willing pawns to get their uh, doctrine, if you will, pushed and implemented in this country. We know where it started. It started with Marx. It started with Marx. Implemented in, in Russia. But how come every time we turn around, there's a black, a quote unquote black group trying to push these ideologies and stuff like that? Because again, the quote unquote white person just sees you as a victim, as an able bodied victim. Like, you're just a, the, per, the perfect victim. And we soak it all in. We soak it all in. So, obviously, you know, the issue that I have with Martin Luther King, excuse me, and uh, Fred Hampton is basically one and the same. Because that was just the communist, the, the communism, like, just using two, two different um, ends to, to get what they wanted done across. Because obviously the Black Panther Party was like aggressive and had the guns and all that stuff. But again, they, they were pushing socialist and communist um, agendas. And then you had the, the pacifists. So, you know, like these things aren't false. These things aren't made up. I'm not, this isn't a conspiracy theory, what, I, what I'm saying. It's well documented. This is easy stuff. This is, this is like level one, all right? Level one clearance stuff. So if anything that what I'm saying to to any brother that that's listening to this right now, if this is new to you, you know, send me an email or whatever and ask me um, for for some books or maybe you no, know, I'll just do a video on just like some basic books that y'all should read 
just to get the the juices going, you know, and and start thinking and start to unplug from all the nonsense that you've been taught your whole damn life. But again, I digress. Whether I agree or disagree with what they were doing, they were still trying to do something to the to the degree where they lost their lives over it. Fight. I'm sitting in a school right now that we built with all black money. Four buildings that we're going to educate black men and it's not easy to solve our problems because there's always black people in your very same community who's fighting against what you're trying to do to help it but in addition to always that's a fact brother always always you're going to get the most resistance from the people closest to you no matter what you're doing no matter you want to start a uh, your own uh Lawn service business tomorrow, you're going to get the most resistance from the people closest to you and the most support from the people that you don't even know. That the white power structure is, is always waving its wand of oppression to try to sabotage anything we do. I think that the analysis of our women is too overly simplistic, and in being such, it is dishonest. But you, uh, but you, uh, you uh, they, they do so good. much. You've only listed names and not accomplishments, though. Okay. Um, the fact that that's her rebut sh should speak volumes. She's she just said you only listed names and not accomplishments. So you she referenced the sixties and also the stuff. She brought that up. And said, black men ain't doing nothing today and they weren't doing nothing back then. Umar brought up these names from brothers from the 60s and the 70s and all that stuff. Um, well documented. Like, if you don't know what Dr. Martin Luther King was a part of, you don't know what Fred Hampton was a part of, Megan Evers was a part of, Malcolm X was a part of, Muhammad Ali was a part of, the, 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 the list goes on whether you agree with it or not. If you don't know what they're a part of and the, the accomplishments... Even like a, a Booker T. Washington, if you're not aware of those, that's on you. But it's just sad that she that someone like like this would be so boisterous, right? So so like over the top and just miss the mark on the most basic uh, levels. I can list some accomplishments. Okay, when it comes down to it, what have black men done since the 60s? We've turned around and we've gotten, we, we, we're still inventing things. We still open up businesses. Here in L.A., you got black businesses all around town. It's just that when we open these businesses up, you have a city that these black businesses suddenly catch on fire. You have issues when it comes down to what's going on right now with one of my cousins and these abatement laws who's built plenty of properties here in L.A. managing it, but because of some gang activity down the street, a nuisance abatement is about to get all of his properties taken. So when black men do build things, and we build things on an individual basis, you're not going to see an NBC special about what the great black man built. When Irv Gotti, Suge Knight, and uh, Jake, Mark, Jake Prince tried to put together a, a, a distribution, they all got charges the next week. So it's not like we don't build things. When we do build things, something always ends up seem to happening. And in spite of that, in spite of that, you've seen the most black business male ownership that's, that's gone up in the last 60 years since the coronavirus. We still doing it. I personally got three businesses. So I don't know what you're talking about. I, empl I employ young black men. I've helped thousands of black children here in South Central LA. So all this black men ain't doing nothing. Where are you kicking it at? So how are you? So how are black people still calling the number one fifty billion a year? Hold that thought. I want to get. I want to get. Hold that thought. I want to get hope in here real quick, Dr. Umar. I want to get hope in here because Dr. Umar listed a plethora of black men that we know, and I'm I'm assuming he listed the ones that we know so that we can identify and all agree that these black men have done something in terms of. Look at you, Tammy. Good, good. So you're not half bad as a moderator or as a listener. Good. Or maybe your producer's in the ear telling you that. I don't know. But I'll give you the credit for now. The fight for equality in America. How do you feel about those men that he listed, Hope? Have they done anything for the black community or not? 
Most definitely, I would be ignorant to say that they haven't, right? But I think that what we're failing to realize is that when we have this conversation about what black men have done, the consequences are usually because of white supremacy and the the gaze of white folks on us are that the black men are then taken away and the black women have to then sustain those things. To say that black women are unappreciative of that, it would be, I I think that is the dishonesty, right? The way that black women show up for the black community and the black families, regardless of how we feel about the black men that we might be interacting with or the black men that are doing bad things while still staying here to cultivate the black men who are, is, I I mean, to overlook that to me is just dishonest. The idea that y'all, a lot of you all were raised by grandma and them and and, and auntie them and all of these amazing black women that are in community and share space with you and, and share space with your children, that's being looked over. But also this is isn't, Dr. Umar, you're right. I don't agree with a lot of the stuff that you said, but you're absolutely right. It's not about the idea of who's doing it better or trying to, the pissing match of the oppression Olympus amongst black people, but it's really about working together. The problem is what I find in working together is that the black man wants to lead whether he's acquired the the, 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 the gumption and the knowledge to be able to do so. Apart. Y'all see how she just turned all that shit around? She was start. she was getting good. And then she said, the problem is when the black man wants to lead. Let's rewind this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stop this video right here, right now. Start a new one. And we're going to really like dive into that topic. Really going to dive into it. So let me rewind it now. Stop this. And I'll catch you on the next one.